Hello and welcome, as it is the uh, 23rd day of January 2018. My name is Derek. Everything you do within your own risk, own reward. I did not take the risk. I am very... Uh, I feel really good and bad at the same time because I am not surprised in what just happened on the CAWNBT exchange on the coin exchange website. As the price uh, several hours ago dropped down to that of the 24 hour low of 59 Satoshi. Now back up at 11.28. I did very well with this coin on this site when it was a few weeks ago. When the price was over 2000. Gaining about 100 to 150% in token size or cannabis coin size through trading. Now, yesterday, there was a very large sell order at the price point of 1250. And 1250 would have recognized to this high. And the value I noticed was two and a half Bitcoin as far as, as, far as what it was worth. I had an eye on this bid the entire day. I was trying to hope that the market, the main market, on larger exchanges would have rallied to over 1300 where I then most certainly would have been buying off of that person. And I also realized that that person probably was using fear trying to unload a couple, a decent amount, a decent amount because of the whole fear on the cycle like why would you ever want to sell at that price down it just makes to me no sense but anyway i realized two things one that the uh, the idea that this could happen was high and to the degree because if he had that many cannabis coins if he's just going to sell it down to the market he pretty much sold it to the entire market and of course, when I say he, that could also affiliate she or they or them or it, whatever. But the bottom line is, if you're able to have buy orders in at this point, you'll get some extreme profits. You can wait and then sell it on this exchange later on. And obviously you can do that now. Of course, you're not going to get the best of prices at the 1128 handle. Uh, let me just check what the actual market is in the larger exchanges. And I read 11.58. But. So therefore, it's obviously the magnificent spot. Now, if I take a look at this chart on a more longer term time frame. But no, before I do that, I want to explain the chart when I see this. When you look at these moves and you want to understand them. And this is too big of a font size. So let me just fix that. But within these moves, when you see this, that means the price was last traded at 1200 And then it goes up quickly to over 1400 Well, what the bid and ask ratio would have been preceding this, well, the ask would have been probably at... Well, either the first ask after that would have been over 1400 or he would have, or they would have bought it up to that 1400 area. So if you have ass or, or if you have sell orders in and you're the first in line, you got the sale there. And if you, uh, yeah, if, and, and the bids most likely probably would have been like 1100, 1120. There can be a big difference within them. And that's why you see and go hours without a trade, small trade here, small trades around that. And. And then things obviously pick up a little bit. And then after this move, the reason why you'd see some decent moves after, this is going to spark the market. Those who bought obviously are going to try and sell. But okay, let's now take a look at this on a longer term time frame within this exchange. And we'll use the one day chart here. Now within the situations, there hasn't been really too many explosive moves that this has had in the past I did actually I was the buyer on this low at the bottom that was sweet 
But other than that, you're not getting quite as many. So generally speaking, just by looking at the chart, there's no way you would have known it. But because of that big ask offer out there, indicating someone wanting to sell. Now in that situation, the alternatives, there was two that I can think of that would most certainly uh, help. Number one is move it to another exchange. It takes some time to move this coin. It can take about three hours to move it to Bittrex. It can take about an hour and a half to move it to Cryptopia. 200 exchanges on Bittrex, 100, or confirmations rather, it's a lot and then it's about a hundred on Cryptopia but either way it's just you you do that you wait you do things you go there then you sell it on that market then you move your Bitcoin to where you need to plain and simple of course maybe you can't get an account there maybe you got your withdrawal limits and stuff that I understand so the alternate play and I really wish you would have done that is instead of selling it for 1250 had that person sold it for 1200 1175 I would have been picking at that all day long yesterday. Buying it up. Okay, so you're selling for like 1160 I'll buy what I can afford, which is an okay amount. Probably about a, well, whatever I had on there is what I'd buy because depending on what the market looked like, it's, a, it's tough because it's a long transfer time. But I'd buy whatever, move it. And as the confirmations would get close, and I realize I'm selling at a safe area, I'd buy some more. And of course, if you really wanted to get out of it, instead of selling it down to these levels, just put a buy order in for like 1,050. That thing will go within the day. There'll be scalpers and or that'll just feast on it all day long like myself. But anyway, those would be the alternate plays if you're in that situation because I try to kind of wonder the thinking towards such, especially now with exchanges when people can't easily maybe transfer as much or at least don't have the know-how. Now for myself last night when I went to bed, I was debating on having two buy orders in and I probably should have done both, one for this code and the other is Litecoin. So let me show you the Litecoin chart on here. And when I look at this, obviously going back to the trading volume that it had pre-August, uh, it's really tough to say much about that. But there's a lot of these spikes on this chart, especially the recent one in here. And then the one that happened that preceded it as well. But all the ones, at least going back from like, this one here, these, there's a lot of good situations for, to have buy and sell orders in. And I have a lot, and I have them in short term, intermediate term, and long term positions. So when my buy orders were in, I had buy orders in at uh, like the 0 0.0157 handle, 0 0.0152, 0 0.0015. Definitely, I had a decent one at 0.015. But I even have a bigger one at 0 0.01 even, 0 0.012, and I even have some at around, or one at a point, point oh, oh, 0.003. So those are my buy orders after the night. None of them, of course, hit. Sell orders, I'm selling all the way up. I got a lot of Litecoin. So I can afford to be able to make those plays. Because if I got a situation where, I'm not going to say it's as good as the one before, but OMG if it is. But let's just say it... Uh, even spikes up to say the three handle and then of course it's just going to come back because all the bigger markets i mean litecoin's a huge traded market they always have to go back to where they came from there's nothing else that can happen and even if they don't you can just transfer your funds anyway and what obviously keep never mind uh but if i end up selling say 10 litecoin at 0.03 then now i have the opportunity to buy like 15 of them back, 16 back, 17, and they're all free extra ones on the side. So that's a beautiful thing to play. And the same thing on the buy. If I buy a 10, say I buy 20 Litecoin there, oh, I can get away with selling like 14 or 15 at market price, and the, the, the rest are free coins. But uh, 
Yeah, I've talked about putting those buy orders in, but the, the problem here is I look at uh, my portfolio and I have, I'm not gonna say how many Bitcoin I have in my hardware wallet, but definitely it's just sitting there not doing anything. However, the security factor of knowing that they're there, especially this site had some problems several days ago. And actually I wanna talk about that now. I'm gonna show you the chart for uh, within it. So let me put on the hourly chart. And I'm gonna to refer to the 20th day because this is the hourly time frame, and we can see about a half a dozen or so periods where this never traded as the site was down for everybody. Their Twitter posts kept everyone aware that the, our funds were safe, they were, they were not being hacked, and that things would be restoring and they are basically working around the clock. And this happened on Eastern time. I noticed this happened around dinner time. It happened, they went off for a while. Then it came back on for a short time, maybe an hour. And then it went down and it was down all night. They posted at the morning a website that could, as a temporary backup one for the bead time and it worked. But the overall down time seemed to be from like 8 p.m. until, well, 12 hours. So the fact that I only see six candles here makes me a little concerned. There's a lot of reasons why I don't like playing on exchanges and there's only one reason why I love playing on them. The one reason why I love is because they're so profitable and that overtakes all of the ones for uh, why don't I can't say that's the only reason why I like it because I've never ever not gotten paid when I've made a withdrawal. I have 100% of them be received. There has been a couple occasions where it took a month. There were occasions, many occasions, where it takes better part or longer than a day. In some cases with the Bitcoin mempool, I have been hit with uh, three, four day transfers on about two or three occasions, once with the Litecoin and the hit BTC exchange. And it seems that happens more within them twice. I've got hit with a mempool on their exchanges. But anyway, this, uh, there's a lot of, again, there's a lot of profit. Now this move in here gives small profit because if the market's trading, and it, of course it was at this time in the 165, 166 range, and you're able to sell at a little under 170, let's say four basis point difference on 166, which works out to about 2% when you pay the rake. So you're able to sell, say, 10 Litecoin and then buy back like 10.08 at the uh, same price. Or what's point, well, a point one is uh, 1% one so uh, one, point 0.2, you get point 0.2 rather. So it's not a bad scalp, if you will. And then of course there's some in here these little moves in here, always nice to get them whenever you can. Oftentimes when you see these moves in here, if you have your buy orders to get them, you're almost usually going to get a, uh, a significant gain. I wanna talk about another situation for a lesson in which uh, I learned. And week backs, Weeks back, maybe a couple, Cryptopia closed the Litecoin and DOG. I call it the doggy market because they have a picture of a dog on it. So it's a doggy market as far as what I call it. Well, that day they sold Litecoin. It was 2 to 4% lower than normal for the entire day. And I'm guessing that the doggy market, dodgy market, dog doggy market was about the same. And it was easy to buy within that rate as you could put buy orders in and, and they were failing fast. People, I could, if the bid ask was say 0 0.0160 and 0.016, say 19 was the difference. And the other price at other exchanges was like 0 0.0165 or six, you could easily take the two number, but you could even put lower bid numbers and they were working. And sometimes on the ask, you would notice, oh my goodness, I could just take good price right now. And I got a little bit of a gain. 
but what I should have done was be extremely aggressive at it. I would have found out what my withdrawal rates on some of my exchanges would have been. And I already had withdrawn, I think it was 70 or 80 Litecoin from that site on uh, Cryptopia Fine. I got a good withdrawal limit. I don't even know what it is, but it's obviously five digits anyway. And I've on hit BTC, I don't know what it is there, but I've done over a Bitcoin before there. I could have seen what the market was there. Could have sold some there. And the exchange I showed, Coin Exchange, I've I've done a Bitcoin there too, and I don't know what my limit is, and that's worked fine. So you literally get to the point where you buy a whole bunch of Litecoin where it's cheap. You deposit Litecoin to a place where you'd want to sell at those exchanges that I mentioned. And then you withdraw heavy. Because you're going to sell, say you withdraw, say you deposit, say, 60 Litecoin. Then you buy a bunch. Then you sell the 60. You get a whole bunch of Bitcoin. Then you transfer them over to Cryptopia. And then the Litecoin you buy, you're going to transfer to where you need to sell it. Now, Litecoins, usually you can transfer within like sometimes 10 minutes, it seems common. It's really awesome. I love transferring Litecoin because it doesn't take long. But Bitcoin, you know it's going to take an hour or two. So I realized the gains would have definitely been limited just based on that factor alone. But the whole thing was to realize that the psychological reasons for this to happen was there because when they announced the Litecoin market was closed then that made people who had a whole bunch of it because they had buy orders for them obviously and that was their base account to trade to just get rid of it. Now that's that surprised me that that happened because I did think about that in that morning but I thought Man, Litecoin is such an easy transfer. It's a little expensive, but not really at a 0.01 transfer fee at that time. Of course, I never did think of people who have maybe withdrawal limitations. That's something I really probably should have thought of because that would make sense right there. So now if they want to trade, they're going to have to trade into Bitcoin. So in order to get Bitcoin, they'd have to sell their Litecoin. So whenever situations happen, that you know is going to affect the psychology of individuals or the masses. And I've shown two here. How is that going to play out? How can you profit from it? Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.